Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink and you're listening to The Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a game. Today we're going to be talking about Attack of the Alien Robot Monsters. This is a tower defense game brought to you by Craftix. And it was released in early September. Today we're going to be going over everything that this game has to offer. If you're only interested in the summary and my opinion, then go ahead and hit the box up in the corner that will take you directly to that portion of the video and you can skip all of what we're about to do. For the rest of you, let's go ahead and hit the start game button and see where it takes us. This is a pretty normal progression map for a tower defense game. Obviously, you beat each mission to move on to the next one. You can earn between one and three badges that you can spend on the upgrade screen, which I do love if only for the reset button, because then if you misallocate a skill point, if you need a different strength for the mission that you're tackling currently, you can just reset it, start all over. This also opens up a whole different aspect of tower defense games because in a lot of them, you end up progressing until you unlock an overpowered turret. Then you use that overpowered turret exclusively until you unlock another one. And it just kind of gets like that. It's incredibly spammy, monotonous, and this is not that way because you end up running into unique challenges in each mission that force you to reevaluate what strengths you need. So this was a really good idea, and I like how this was implemented. Let's go ahead and jump into a match and just see where it takes us. This is going to be a boss battle, actually. It's for the Wasteland biome, and since it is a boss battle, it only has one entry and one exit. Most of the maps, though, do have multiple entries entries and a few of them have multiple exit points. You can't alter the paths of the units so you do have to use slowing techniques. Um, you've got to use shock tower specifically that you can get through the tech lab. So as far as the choice of turrets goes, this one is a little bit unique in that you only have two to start with. You've got a basic barracks or the depot as it's called and then you have the tech lab. So all of your other turrets are going to branch off of these and you can upgrade them to ridiculous lengths into different kinds of things even up to satellite controls that shoot lasers from space to where you can upgrade to a barracks and actually have units that you can move around the map using a waypoint system that you can then upgrade into shock troopers, shotguns, that kind of thing. So there's a tremendous range of options even going out into flamethrowers and sniper towers. So you're going to be able to manipulate the map to your needs pretty easily using all of the options that you have available. Now, a couple of little minor things with the unit selection and the user interface. Um, I did find myself misclicking a lot because if you don't actually click on the icon, if you only click on the edges of the boxes, then it just kind of clicks through and you don't actually select anything, which if you're on autopilot is... Slightly annoying, but not such that it's critical. So I, I'm not particularly worried about it, but it is there. That could be corrected. Um, the other problem that I had was with the upgrade system. Specifically, I don't know which upgrades carry over and which ones don't. So if you upgrade the range on your tower, you get a range upgrade. Then if you upgrade to the science lab, you keep your range. Whereas if you don't upgrade your range first and you only upgrade to the science lab, you can't upgrade your range anymore and you're stuck with the short range tower. So obviously that one stacks. However, if you pick a barracks and then you go for the grenade upgrade and then later you go for the outpost to get your snipers, then you lose the grenade capability. So that one does not stack. And there's no explanation for that anywhere that I can find where it tells you which ones progress, which ones don't, and which statistics stack up as far as damage goes. Let's go ahead and start a mission, and we will see where it takes us as we chat just a little bit more about this. Um, this game is using a kind of 16-bit graphics feel, and the soundtrack I was actually kind of impressed with. Typically, I use tower defense games as a time killer. That means I've got it up on one screen, and I'm kind of mindlessly playing away, while on the other screen, I watch TV or do something like that. So, I don't really see, hear the noises or do any of that because it gets really monotonous. The soundtrack the sound effects, all of that. This game was not that way. There is actually enough variety in the soundtrack to make it where I can make this my main focus and I don't have to worry about finding something else to cover up the monotony. So I was pretty impressed with that because there's not many tower defense games that can say that. And I do like the art style. It works really well. Simplistic. There's nothing additional there. It, it does what it's supposed to do and I like it. 
Coolio. Um, as far as the usefulness of all the units and how they go versus the enemies, um, there are multiple enemy types, some of which are shielded. So you do have to think about your tower placement a lot and putting towers ahead of your slowing tower so that you can knock shields down in order for your shock to take effect. So there's multiple layers to this game that you have to find your way through in order to make everything work. I find myself replaying missions four or five times once I got up into the harder difficulties because I was having a really hard time figuring out which combinations worked and which ones did not. So there's a lot of play time involved with this game. But at the same time, I didn't really find myself beating my head against the wall because finding the right combination of the three main types, projectiles, infantry, which actually stop units for hand-to-hand -hand combat, as you can see there, and the stun towers, it, it's really difficult to make it all work out to your advantage. So you're going to be working with that a lot, in addition to the upgrade screen that we looked at earlier. So it all works together, it all fits together, and you're going to end up playing through these a bunch of times. So that pretty much wraps up the gameplay aspect. The only other comment that I would have on it is that it is too slow-paced at some times. There's only one fast-forward option which doubles the speeds of the units, which is perfect pacing for building actually uh, the the original pacing is just way too slow this is not so slow that I found myself getting bored with the game but it was mildly frustrating at times because you just want things to move quicker when you have your ecosystem set up you're killing hundred percent of the units no problem there's no reason to take any longer there's no way to fast forward it more so that pretty much wraps up everything that I had to say about the gameplay about the game itself all that good stuff. What is my takeaway? Well, I'm actually going to get out of this here and we're going to look at the main screen. So I want to show you this. I have put five hours into this game. I am roughly halfway through it. Maybe not even quite halfway. I have not even tackled the bonus missions yet. And I still haven't gotten three badges on all of these in the back. So as far as playability goes, you're going to get a ton. I mean a ton of hours out of this. And it's only $6. For bang for the buck, this game is top notch. I highly recommend it if you are anyone who likes tower defense games. This is absolutely going to be a game that you want in your collection. The graphics are spot on. They are good enough, but not overwhelming. The soundtrack is good. The gameplay is solid. All around, I think that you'll be impressed with this if you are any kind of fan of tower defense games and i think that is where i'm going to leave it well done craftics games you nailed this one Alrighty, guys as always thank you so much for watching if you want any more reviews or to watch strategy game cast that kind of thing subscribe to the channel i would love to have you around and i will see you guys in the next one